On January 21st, 2014, the Supreme Court will hear argument in the case of Harris versus Quinn. This case could have profound significance for the state of labor law in public employment, for the state of the law under the First Amendment to the Constitution, for the future of labor unions, and for the balance of political power in the United States. The case arises, the case involves what are known as agency shop fees. Now, when a union is selected by a majority of the employees in a defined segment of an employer's workforce called a bargaining unit, the union becomes the exclusive bargaining representative for all of the employees in that bargaining unit. Thus, the union is charged, charged with a legal duty to represent all of the employees, not just the employees who choose to join the union. This poses what economists call a collective action problem. It is a perfectly rational decision for an employee in that bargaining unit to decide not to join the union because that employee's dues standing alone is not likely to have an impact on the quality of the representation that that em employee receives. But the collective action problem arises when, when large numbers of those employees make those individually rational decisions. And as a result, the union does not have the financial resources it needs to effectively represent the employees. Enter Harris versus Quinn. In Harris versus Quinn, it deals with individuals who provide in-home health care assistance to people with disability. Those individuals are hired by the disabled person, or in the case of a disabled minor, that person's parent or guardian. They are paid by the state, in this case the state of Illinois, with Medicaid funds. The state also sets a number of other conditions of their, that govern their relationship with the disabled person or the uh, parent or guardian of the disabled child. The uh, state of Illinois declared as a matter of state law that the state would be considered the employer of record for these home health care aides for purposes of collective bargaining. There were two different bargaining units of home health care aides. The Service Employees International Union successfully organized one of those two bargaining units. It was selected by a majority of those home health care aides to be their representative for bargaining with the state and was certified as the exclusive bargaining representative for all of those home health care aides. In its collective bargaining agreement with the state of Illinois, the, the parties agreed that those aides who chose not to become members of SEIU would pay an agency fee to SEIU. Some of those non-members represented by the National Right to Work Committee filed a lawsuit claiming this violated their First Amendment rights. The Supreme Court, after tr having the petition for certiorari for 23 months, an extraordinarily long time, decided to review the case. What might the consequences of the court's decision here be? Well, the most immediate consequence will be for labor law. That is, the court's decision, if it chooses to overrule Abood, would turn the entire public sector into an open shop. I think we would, we would very quickly see individuals not, not renew their union membership because now they would have a right to get for free what before they could be compelled to pay for. The, uh, but it will also have a profound effect on the law generally under the First Amendment because there are many other situations that are comparable to these agency shop agreements. Who, who, that have been previously ruled constitutional by the Supreme Court that could now be brought into question. Beyond that, this decision could have very significant effects on the labor union movement in general because currently a majority of employees represented by unions work in the public sector. And this could very well harm unions to a large extent financially. That is, without the ability to solve the collective action problem by requiring non-members to pay a fee, 
covering their pro rata share of the cost of their representation, union treasuries could take a tremendous hit. And unions um, could be substantially weakened financially. It could result in unions having to lay off staff, being able to less capably represent their employees. And finally, it could have a, a significant impact on the balance of political power in this country. Because as we know, labor unions are a major source of funding for pre predominantly democratic candidates for office and politically progressive causes. But if the entire public sector is turned into an open shop, the, the resources that unions will have available to engage in those activities are going to be substantially less. And that could have a major impact on the outcome of elections. What will the court do here? It's anybody's guess. Any result other than a dismissal of the writ as improvidently granted is bound to have very profound effects on labor law, on the law under the First Amendment, and also on the political balance of power in the United States.